Hello and welcome to the Untuned Podcast, a show about learning how to excel in a data and digital driven world. Now, here is your host, Gaurav Kumar. Hello and welcome again to the Untuned Podcast. This is your host, Gaurav, and today I am beyond excited to have my first guest on this podcast. And our first guest is Anjali Sharma. Anjali is one of the leading business storytelling consultants, author, global keynote speaker, and founder of Narrative, the Business of Stories. Anjali helps business leaders, data analysts, sales professionals, marketeers, and TEDx speakers find and tell stories. Anjali has worked in corporate roles for over 18 years in Australia, Singapore, and India. Today, Anjali partners with global thousand companies including Facebook, LinkedIn, Airbnb, and Microsoft Sorts to consult them on their storytelling. So let's welcome Anjali Sharma. Hi Anjali, welcome to the Untuned Podcast and thank you so much for having time with me today. I would like to introduce you to my listeners and if you can just say hi to them. Hi everyone, very glad to be here today. Thank you so much, Anjali. I just wanted to start our conversation with, you know, knowing what you have been doing and how you have been helping different corporate, helping different kind of professionals through the storytelling, which is really, really interesting. So one thing that I wanted to do when we start our conversation is that, you know, specifically when we talk about data and data storytelling and data impact or creating impact through data, it's been a while that, you know, everybody has been talking about creating impact through data, creating impact through data-driven decisions. And I just wanted to understand as we go through and start our conversation is that from your perspective, your learning and your experience, what do you think is, uh, you know, one of the biggest gaps that, you know, that is still not fulfilled? Uh, There is a gap in terms of people not even understanding it uh, before we even go to implement that. Uh, What do you think from a data operationalization perspective or, you know, realizing impact through data, what could be the biggest gap that we need to be aware of? Yeah, so thank you for the question, Gaurav. I, I, you know, obviously what I do day in and out is communication, right? So I think when you look at data as a whole, I'm sure there are many uh, facets of data, but I I would naturally, as a, as a storytelling practitioner, be able to kind of zoom further and deeper into one of one of the aspects about data storytelling that is truly overlooked, which is the way you communicate your data findings. Um, I think that for me is something that we have not given enough thought. So we've put people in situation where uh, they never used to have data in their hand. And now based on how, you know, everything has become digital, data has come into their hands so if you were a salesperson or you were a procurement person or you were in marketing uh, the amount of data that you would see probably about you know say about seven eight years ago or it would be far less than the amount of data you now see Uh, i mean i remember heading sales in australia and the only data i used to see was revenue related data right um, how much, uh, you know, how much was the target, how much we were going to reforecast and where we were sitting against the target. That's really the, you know, the, how, how far we went. But today, I'm sure people see a lot more data and it is not, re- you know, contained only to people like data scientists and yes. um, to people who you, data used to be sort of limited to. But as this transition has happened, that data for everyone and everyone is now put in a position to drive data, data-driven decisions, uh, that has also come with uh, with this issue where we have to influence with the data, you know, with using the insights from data. But we have done nothing to equip these people who suddenly have so much data and have to influence with uh, with the data. So, um, you know. Of course, there are those issues with not just data, but good data, the veracity of data. But I think as a storytelling practitioner, for me, the biggest issue I think, or the biggest thing that we may have overlooked, um, and now some of the companies are really looking at it, 
is the ability to be able to communicate that data effectively. Sure, and that completely resonates me with me because you know I have been into a data role for for almost fifteen years now, and what I realize is that we have really come a long way from when we used to talk about just data access when we talk about you know integration and availability of data across um, enterprise, and and today it is more about you know we are going back and questioning that premise against. Uh, you know, not not just having data access is important, but how is that we can use the data effectively? And and uh, as you rightly said, communication is the most important piece that is that has been missing for a while. So uh, that kind of leads to another question that I have in mind, and I've been really excited about asking this question to you. Is that when we talk about storytelling? You know, uh, of course there are structural theories, and uh, when we talk about the storytelling practitioners, when we talk about if, if, if as a novice, I have to read about how to do a storytelling. Now, uh, and you know, uh, there, there has been a structure and a format and a framework around it. So what would be interesting to understand is that uh, from your perspective, what is the difference when we talk about storytelling, for example, for, for a mythological story versus uh, storytelling for business, the storytelling with data? What's the structural differences? Are there any differences or uh, there's some, there something that we should know and learn about? So I think one of the biggest differences between um, storytelling just generally and for business purposes is to just try and understand that all the other forms of storytelling are not for a driving a business outcome. They are primarily for entertainment and as a result, a choice that people make. So I make a choice to watch a movie. I make a choice to listen to grandma stories. I make a choice to read a novel. Uh, wherein business storytelling is something that is required for our, uh, you know, our personal vocational fulfillment and our corporate success. We have to do that. It's a mandate. It's not without it, we can't be successful. Um, so it's not a choice. Um, and I think a lot of the business storytelling and data driven storytelling is based on factual information, things that have happened and you're wrapping those things into a story to be able to get the message across. Uh, wherein in the other side of the storytelling format, there's a lot about imaginary, fictional, aspirational and all those sorts of things. Um, so I think the purpose in itself is very, very different. Now, let me talk to you about a specific thing about uh, the the numbers and the data data driven storytelling. I think data driven storytelling is probably the hardest format of storytelling. And that has got something to do with our uh, I read about this in a book. I can't remember the name of the book, but I read about this. And I think the reason why data storytelling is a hard, hardest format of storytelling simply because you see, when we go to school, we learn to use numbers for an analysis purposes. And we learn a language to tell stories. But we never learn how to tell stories about numbers. Those are two very different things in our education system. And now suddenly we're put into the situation where we have to tell stories about numbers. That was never the way. Either I was an art student or I was a science student or, you know, I either did physics and chemistry or I did you know, I did mastered in arts or something. So we were kind of kept those two streams very, very differently. So data storytelling is probably the hardest, not only in terms of the way our education system has designed for it to be, but also because it is quite new for us, right? I mean, for, for a long time, data was only available to scientists and, and authorities. It wasn't as readily available as it is to everyone. Um, you know, I remember being in a role in, in Australia, um, head in sales, and I only looked at a very limited amount of data. When I talk to the salespeople now, the amount of data they look at, because e-commerce is such a huge part of their portfolio, it's insane. So I think it's also very new. So the big difference is factual drive decisions, make business outcomes happen, not a choice, not for entertainment. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that that's pretty interesting to know that difference. And I totally appreciate that, you know, uh, there are fundamentally there are differences in terms of how you tell a story for entertainment versus how you tell a story for business or for, a, you know, sort of a objective goal that you would have in your mind. Thank you so much. 
Uh, you know, leading to that, uh, one thing that I wanted to make sure that I understand it well is that when we talk about storytelling for data or storytelling for business, how do you really measure it, right? Because, you know, when we talk about investing time, resources, and having a strategic perspective around infusing storytelling with data uh, for any of the initiatives in the enterprise, how do clients or, or, or you as a practitioner go about measuring it? Is it about measuring some, you know, one or two key KPIs leading to very objective KPIs such as revenue for that matter? Or is it about having a fluid uh, sort of measurement framework around this, uh, say talking about change in culture, uh, change into some of the secondary things that we look at, not just looking at revenue and incrementality from, from a revenue perspective. So how do we really measure the impact of storytelling if I have to invest into storytelling today as a data practitioner or as a business? Yeah, okay. So, okay, so there are certain sort of scenarios which are very clear cut, and I'll give you the example of that scenario. So, currently, one of the projects that I'm working on is um, it's an artificial in, uh, intelligence initiative um, by one of the Fortune 500 companies. Um, so, the whole process is what, you know, uh, it's data in the form of images and being able to drive better dis- business outcomes using that data that we have. Uh, to make faster if, um, decisions and be, if, make people more efficient. Now, we have a very set outcome that we want out of that project. My job in that project is to come up with a story that uh, the CEO and the president of the company can tell to people so that they are excited about the initiative, they participate in it, and they make the change that this company seeks to, uh, you know, seeks to make. So. We have a very clear KPI associated with this project. Every department of this company needs to have an artificial intelligence led project by the end of a certain year, right? So then the story that I will build for all the leaders to tell their people, would that story drive towards that decision? How many would we actually be able to motivate and support and all of that? is a very clear indicator of the success of whether investing in the story was the right thing to do or not. Um, Now, the tricky part with this is that these people who we are asking to uh, come up with an artificial intelligence driven initiative for their department um, happen to be the non-technical folks of the company. So it's like people like, you know, people like who sell, people like who, uh, you know, uh, who are human resources. So it's not the technical people. So it's the people who are in other functions. They have to use artificial intelligence and be able to come up with one initiative. So for me, the criteria is very clear of the success of the story. We have 10 functions. How many functions was the story able to move in the right direction? So, you know, it's very clear to be able to measure it. Now, that is a clear cut scenario. Now, let's look at the scenario where people just come to learn data storytelling, right? Um, Okay, I I say, okay, so I'll I'll go back to the example of this um, uh, technology-led solutions company based out of uh, United States that I work with a lot. So they, on the regular basis, send their people to learn data storytelling skills with me um it's very so therein that it becomes a little bit gray so after they have learned how do you measure the objectivity of it what revenue they convert is not something i we can take a responsibility for at the learning level that's a very premature level to take that sort of matrix into place but i think what we do is that we uh we make sure that they master it's how you design the the matrix for the success, right? So for us, the goal becomes that, okay, can each of the person who comes here, can they master certain signature stories that they use in their data-driven roles at all times? So I can say, how do I introduce, um, you know, uh, use of, uh, uh, you know, how do I introduce cloud migration services using data. That's a signature story that this team needs to repeatedly tell. Uh, Or how do I tell the story of um, monolith architecture usage? Uh, If they can master that one story in a learning environment, uh, 
and then how many times do they get to the next step with that particular story that they have mastered in the sales cycle with the client is a matrix that I would design. So it's very important for me to design the matrix um, of success, but I would be very careful about how in which particular project I design the matrix. The other thing I must mention Gaurav here is that nobody is going to master storytelling by coming and listening to me in a session. So no. as a result of that, all my data storytelling learning initiatives are doing initiatives. None of them is learning initiatives. It is learning by doing. Um, it's not a spectator sport that so they can come just learn to watch principles. You, you watch me do something. You, I say to you, okay, do this, do this, do this, do that. Now, when you do do that, that's when you start realizing where you go wrong and where you go right by just listening to me you'll be like oh this is so easy it's storytelling is like acting it's like singing it's like playing football it's tacit knowledge it's not implicit knowledge you when you start doing it you start realizing it that is why for us getting a signature story out and then shift using the signature story how many times you've shifted to next sales cycle is a matrix that i would probably build i hope that answers your question Sure, oh, that's that's a pretty interesting insight. And you know, uh, as you say, that there are uh, you know different ways of one how people perceive all of this, right? Just by enrolling into a storytelling learning initiative doesn't make sure that you will have immediate gains for that matter. So one thing that I have been struggling throughout my career as a data practitioner has been that you know uh, people talk about you know change into the newer organizations, organizations who have been there for a while, and uh, you know uh, culture change plays a really really important role right so uh, when we talk about inducing change through data initiatives for that matter you'll you'll you know essentially hit roadblocks most often not um, you know uh, because of you know there is a cultural uh, i would say um, uh, resistance that happens um, so in terms of a storytelling initiative i'm sure there will be um, challenges around the culture of an organization but how important is it uh, to build a culture of you know um, adopting this storytelling and believing into or trusting that fact that it is important uh, as a part of the business uh, what role the culture plays into making sure that a storytelling is set up for success in an organization in particular a data organization or an organization that is trying to become a data driven organization I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, there's a reason why uh, many years ago, I think I, I think it's Peter Drucker who said this, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast or something like that. I, I can't remember who exactly said that. Yeah, that's but there is a reason, there is a reason that was said and there's a reason that that still holds true for today. But let's look at, you know, not being so general about this statement and let's look at making it super specific and talk about data in particular. So the whole thing, one of the unique aspects when it comes to culture and data is this this Gaurav. Quite often, data in a very factual way surfaces things that people don't want to hear. Uh, for example, uh, there are four or five teams in a project. Uh, you start to analyze the data. Uh, almost always, you will find that a particular team did something which did, was became the barrier to the success of the project. Um, or a particular team did not do enough because of which the project did not drive the better business outcome. So the problem with data or, or even the blessing with data is that it is very clear cut, right? It's not, a, it's not subjective, it's supremely objective. So if you have a culture of something that I term blame instinct, uh, which people don't say, I want to wake up in the morning and do blame instinct, I want to blame people, they are very... Uh, they lead with a mindset of being extremely rational, logical, and practical. If that's the culture, where pretty much they put the data out and they say, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this team did this much, and this team did that much, and as a result of that, that happened, right? They're just saying exactly what the data is telling them. Now, sadly, the culture in the organization has not been designed to take a very profound insight into mind that you cannot drive better business outcomes by having a blame instinct. You have to not look at who made the failure, but dig one level deeper and figure out what circumstances led for the failure to be made. Now, 
uh, what circumstances was that team in? So I'll give you an example. Okay, so recently I worked with a very large property group, and in that property group, we were looking at the presentation that we were going to make to the board, where we looked at the data about acquiring a particular business. Uh, now. When we looked at the data, it was very clear to us that in the past, this attempt to acquire this business had been made. And very quickly, the team said to me, absolutely no, we're not going to use this data because some of the people who were a part of this decision making and this decision failed miserably are still there. And I said, why are you shying away? Because this data gives us very good insights to draw better business outcomes. They said, well, if you put the names of these people, they're still in the business and they will uh, you know, they will feel very bad about it. I said, well, you know, there is a better way. Rather than saying this department did that and that is why we were not able to drive the better business outcome. Um, it was lack of looking at a couple of reports from uh, some uh, uh, a couple of reports that we, the company needed to buy to look at to be able to make the right decision. And those reports were not bought. Uh, and that's where the decision went the wrong way. And then when we further looked at, we realized that the reason why the reports were not bought at that time, because in Singapore at that time, those reports were locally not available. They needed to be bought from elsewhere. And because they were at a global level, this decision was at a local level. The, um, the, you know, the way that that report would have contributed towards decision making wouldn't have been the same. So then I said, see, there you go. When we dig deeper, we find why. So we shift the blame from who to why. And then we were able to drive the better business outcome. So uh, blame instinct unknowingly is a huge cultural issue when it comes to data storytelling, because you always have to talk about, and then something happened, right? Something did not work out. Uh, that's how the stories come out. And there and where do you lead with data is often going to determine uh, what the, you know, is deter determined by the culture of the organization. The, the other thing is that data is also very naturally logical, methodical and a practical sort of thing. It's a number thing. So the moment you try to attach the word storytelling with it, it actually makes people go, yeah, right, uh-huh, not really. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I think there's this, fallacy that storytelling is a poofy and a funny. Um, yeah. I can tell yeah. you that I have worked with a lot and, and we storytelling practitioners do a disservice to that as well. We keep the stories to a very poofy fluffy level. Um, but if you really start looking at stories like how did Lego change its fate with data? How did uh, one of Vietnam's biggest health issues with children's malnutrition got solved with data? How did uh, obesity got controlled with data? If you look at some of these really big examples, you can get down to a very, very practical, practical, uh, you know, way of being able to convince people that storytelling and data um, are, are a great marriage. Sure. So that's a great advice, actually. You know, and, and I have experienced this wherein you know people in the organization are very, very fixated about always telling the a great story right and the acceptance of um, not having not so good a story is, is, is something is still you know many of the organizations and people in team are learning across organizations so you know uh, and with that um, i just wanted to also have your view on say when it comes to the technicalities of you know uh, becoming a good storyteller uh, we know that there is uh, you know enough of technology around uh, and there are some you know first principles of telling a story as you talk about principles of communications you know what's the balance like so what do i need do i need to be really equipped with you know right kind of technology in order to create write stories that resonate or you know either from a usability perspective or adoption perspective or is it more about understanding the basic principles of communication and sticking to the sticking to the right principles of storytelling for that matter? What's the balance between creativity and technology for that matter? Yeah, so I mean, technology obviously kind of introduced. I, I assume when you say technology, you're talking about things like Tableau and stuff like that. Am I right to say that? Yeah, and or even the the storytelling technology, right? So how do you create the right kind of media and visuals and uh, you know, the right. platforms that you use to uh, you spread the stories and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, 
technology is just a medium gaurav it's just a medium right um i think at the heart of storytelling is the storyteller um and one of my favorite examples is uh, you know you look at any great storytellers in this world right uh, you look at warren buffett you look at malcolm gladwell you, you know you look at the entire you know you, you look at steve jobs presentations um simplicity with the medium simplicity with the technology is really really important to just keep it as simple as you possibly can um and let the majority of the control be with the teller um okay so here's the truth for you um when i look at informatics data or when i look at um cloud migration related data or when i look at artificial intelligence uh driven initiative data it's not data that is coming from the work that i do all the time but because my principles of communication over time um have become good i am able to look at any graph any chart ask the right question and drive the right story so the point i'm making is that <clears throat> Yes, visuals help. They are an important part, but nothing can absolutely ever overtake the teller. So, you know, I notice where do data storytellers go wrong? They don't go wrong with visuals. In fact, they're very good at that. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm envious of how quickly they tick 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 and they fix their visuals, and I'm go, oh my gosh, you fixed that and converted that into a graph so and a clean, neat line graph so quickly, but I don't know what happens when the telling part starts. Uh, so it's almost like you put up a lovely slide, but you've got nothing to say about it. Sure. Um, there's a really lovely Nokia ad uh, which came out many, many years ago. Obviously, Nokia is not around, and it reminds me of data storytellers that I sometimes work with. So there's these two individuals sitting across the table, two couples, and one couple says to the other couple, "Oh, we just came back from a safari," and the other couple says, "Oh, wow! So tell us what happened." And they said, uh, <laughs> "We we we saw uh, animals." And they're like, "Okay." And then what? We saw lots of animals. Okay. Then what? So the idea is, then Nokia comes up with this thing: is, oh, you really need some help with becoming a good storyteller. So you know, people just don't know what to say. Now, in that case, also you can, if you had the ability to story tell, hey, you know, look what happened on the second day of the safari. We were going, and we would, you could tell a really good story. Yeah. Um. So. you know at the point is that even if on your phone you had the visual you show it and then you have to tell the story about that line or you have to tell the story about finding that animal so i would say that everybody should work damn hard um and i would even go to being audacious enough to say how dare you not work hard to make this you make yourself so good using your words and using your voice uh that no matter what the technology you can always always a shine with it sure and that makes a lot of sense to get the basics right uh, absolutely um well so uh, on that note uh you know i think uh, i need to ask you the the most important question for the listeners and that is uh so if i am a brand if i'm an individual if i'm a practitioner who's looking to uh you know sort of start with learning the importance and and start practicing storytelling for that matter what's your sound advice uh, where do i start uh, you know what's the best way of onboarding myself into this as an organization? organization as an individual uh, and and what's the help around right because uh, the whole idea of uh, telling about the importance and practicing you know, the importance of practicing storytelling is rather new right uh, you know storytelling has been around here but in the business and i'm glad that i see a lot of businesses right now uh, you know sort of uh, it's starting on understanding the importance of this so where do where, where does one start right as an organization or as an individual and and what are the tools that they look at uh, you know and and where should be you know the help that is required to get onto this uh, what's your advice around that yeah so you know gorab this is i'm glad to ask this question because this is a very tricky tricky thing okay so this is what i noticed right so someone would come and say to me can you give give a 60 minute talk on data storytelling and i'll say okay so then i give a talk everybody loves the talk and then when they go back to work the next day they find such a big disconnect in being able to apply and apply the things that they learned they loved what they learned 
but they can't find the way to apply it right so there's a big dis not only a storyteller has to learn how to do it they have to be more than that they have to identify the opportunity to be able to tell a story in their work that is a huge 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 gap where you can read a book but i can guarantee you will come back to your desk and you'll be like okay i love what i learned but how do i put this into practice now that is a huge disconnect in 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 this world so now there are a couple of um, uh, so so um okay before i give you the answer to that now let me ask you okay so if you have to present you tell me okay this is a question for you sure. you have to present um uh communicate about um a change initiative uh, that you are trying to drive in an organization and you're using data to tell people that this is the reason uh data tells us this and this is the reason uh something is not working uh and as a result of that data tells us that th- these are the insights now we must change this way so that we can drive the better business outcome so let me make it one more time tell you make it simpler um you want to drive a change something's yep. not working you look at the data you find why it's not working and then you say here's the solution of why it should work now if we change like this uh it will work so let's all change like this now out of all these places where do you think is the most important place where you can tell a story in all these sections so you know you you have a problem then you find why the problem exists then you find the solution and then you ask everyone to change out of in all these things where do you think is the most appropriate place to tell a story um yeah you know from my perspective i would focus more on uh you know where i have to find the problem because you know i think uh most often uh, and not you know in the organization or in the team uh when you talk about you know any of the initiatives that is primarily led by data initiatives because you know it, it basically pops up a lot of questions so problem identification is a big problem because a lot of people are into the state of denial and they say that well everything is working fine there has always been a great story so i would focus more in terms of saying that why there is a reason for you to identify a problem right and then what does that really lead to is something that i would want people to be on the journey with me because that then needs you know support from from other people there's there's no way i am going to solve that problem all by myself so for me in this cycle uh, the most important part is problem identification and i might be wrong of course no 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 so yeah okay so you you bang on that is the place where most people most logical data driven minds will go as well they identify the problem now the problem with identifying the problem that they face then is they don't wrap the problem in a story so it it is one thing to sort of say to people that um you know we have inaccuracy of information received that's the problem now that is so distilled and so abstract may be correct but does not connect and as a result of that fails to drive the change so you see the the application of the storytelling gorov is so nuanced that you possibly can't learn storytelling unless you start applying it so here we go so i'm going to answer the question that you had asked yeah. as to what i would highly recommend to people is to i i don't know what that platform would be but to rather than reading books on storytelling uh which i do a lot as well rather than listening to po- audio podcasts and stuff like that alone the when you read something or when you listen to something even if you've just picked up one simple thing find an application for that thing straight away so it's it's about sh- as quickly as you possibly can shift into an application is when you will see success for example one of the best practices of opening a data storytelling is to open with a mystery story so you can read about mystery stories where you say things like today i want to talk to you how our smallest market led to our highest yield in the second quarter even if that's the only thing you did in two weeks the application part is the part that you need to jump into very quickly so in terms of people who want to really learn storytelling um i will suggest that the very first thing you do is uh to uh buy this book called uh, data storytelling by brent dykes um yeah. and it is a, it's a great book 
but you're not going to master data storytelling by reading that book alone every time you read a page don't read the second page until you have done an application of what you've learned in the first page because it just doesn't work storytelling is about doing just like acting is about doing just like singing is about doing um and the only way you can get better is that if you shift into do so read a page of the book apply then only move to the next page if you build that sort of a structure uh, then i think you will get to a good place quite quickly great uh, those were great advice uh, uh anjali and i'm um, i'm so glad that, so glad that we had this conversation today because you know uh, as i said that i have been into those shoes for 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 quite a while now and i have seen those challenges happening in organization and i'm sure the listeners of uh, this episode would also relate to a lot of the stuff that we were talking about uh, it was really really insightful and uh, i think this really gives uh, a bit of a thought to people in terms of talking about and thinking about the importance of storytelling so i would like to um, say thanks once again for um, you know all the valuable time that you could spare today with me and i hope that okay. my listeners would have uh, you know uh, you know some some really really valuable insight coming out of this conversation and and they would reach out for probably asking more time from you so thank you lot my pleasure thank you for having me and and story on thank you so much anjali thank you gaurav So that was Anjali Sharma talking about the importance of storytelling and telling us how to be a good data storyteller. I hope you enjoyed it and you create some nice stories with data and in the business. I'll be back next week with a new episode and a new guest. Till then, stay tuned with the Untuned podcast. This is your host Gaurav.